Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. We've got a big topic to cover today. We're covering family entanglements, family recode, which will be fun. Working in that in that field. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Stacy. Yeah, so you know, we let's um let's just have a bit of a conversation before we we get in and do some things. And and let's just remember that what the what we are all here to do. You know, we're we're all here to step into a, a creative structure, be become the creator of our own reality, and then turn those thoughts into things. And most of us need to make that shift. We need to step into, into that shift, into that place where we are the one that's actually saying, you know, this is what I'm going to create and then following through. And so the, the simplicity of, of explaining what needs to be done here doesn't need to negate its potency. Hey, Brian. Hey, Aparajitha. Hey, Judy. The simplicity doesn't, doesn't negate its potency. Just because it's, uh, just because it's simple, just because it's obvious, just because it's there, doesn't, doesn't mean that you need to go find something to become more complex. See, the, the step number one, and we must always remember this, step number one is what do I truly love? What do I truly love? What would I truly love to create? Sometimes it can be a very difficult thing. What do I, what do I truly love to create? The, and, and making sure that we're coming from a true choice, not some sort of reactionary, you know, thing. And no true choice. This is what I choose to create. This is it. This is what I'd like. And getting, getting into that and then stepping into it and, and teaching your whole body. Step two, stepping into it, becoming it. You, you'll never see it till you be it. So be it. Stepping into it. But then coming back to the current reality and going, okay, cool. Well, well, here's the current. Here's what I've created now. Remember, you're not your creation. You are the creative spirit. You are not your creation. Yeah, Sandra said, it's trouble finding what I truly want. Yeah, well, you've got to make it up. You've got to try something out. You see? Many of us have, have not ever been allowed to say, hey, you can have what you really would love. So we're not practiced in it. You know, how will I know? You know, you got to play. you got to try this. Go for that. You know, I don't know. We don't know. If you don't know, well, then that's the first place to start. And so, so once, we, once we get there, we go, well, what, about, what have I created now? But I want to remind you all something is you're not the creation. You're not the current reality. You're not the end in reality. You are already it. And, I, and I've been playing around with one of my drawings today. Uh, so I've got it. Let me just grab it. I'm going to pull up a, a, a new drawing, which I think some of you will really dig. Where is it gone? <laughs> just when I wanted to, to have it here. It's now not here anymore. <laughs> It's always, it's always the way. No, it's not. Okay, let me find it. Because there's, there's something really, really quite important in understanding that you are already it. You know, you're already it because you're not your creator. You're not, you're not what you are creating. So I've been, uh, been working on this drawing a bit. Let's see if it will screen share. Because I've really been wanting to uh, explain this uh, even better. It's breaking up for some of you. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh, it's, it seems to be fine for a lot of people. So, okay, cool. So just, yeah, no problems. Okay, so it's not, it's just one person that's, that's sad. Okay, so, so we're working on this. Okay, so we start off as a, as a pure uh, creative spirit. And we are this, okay? We are the one. And at some point, we become an individual. So, so we start out as this pure creative spirit with access to absolutely everything. 
and we, you know, we, we step into becoming an individual at four weeks old, there, there turns up a heartbeat. And as we become an individual with this limited perspective, which is very useful, okay, we have to have a, a limited perspective. Without a limited perspective, how would we ever be able to enjoy this human experience? <laughs> but you know what's funny about creating a limited perspective? Well, we create limitation. See, by you just having one unique perspective, it's limited. You're not all. If you were all, you couldn't experience anything. You see, if you were the one, the all, all the time, there's no way to experience it because you're already all of it. We can only experience through contrast. So we create a limited pers uh, perspective when we, we give it a name and we orientate through to the world through this limitation. And then, isn't it funny? Then we all go ahead and get annoyed at our limitation. <laughs> See, if, if I wasn't limited, if I didn't have a limit to my body, well, then I couldn't grab anything or hold anything because I would already be it. <laughs> that is what we need. We need to create a, a limited egoic vehicle to be able to experience this, this human experience. So we orientate and then but however we get stuck in it, we never regain that we are actually all of it. So we, we then create our life and we oscillate, right? Slingshot back and forth, right? We, we oscillate and we create this oscillation and then we make this decision, okay? And a lot of you have made this decision and lived the core four choices, predominant creative force, true nature and purpose, uh, healthy and supportive body and a life I love. So, so we go, you know what, I'm gonna have it now. And, and that's when you need to learn to connect to your superconscious so you have it now. We connect to the superconscious and we make this shift from the powerless self-conscious victim to our circumstances to a beautiful superconscious of, of, of creator of your reality. And this, this, this shift here, okay, is this is what we're doing. Once you can recode all the instructions causing resistance to have it now and live these four, that is when you have it. When you're living those four, when you're living a healthy and supportive body, when you're living your true nature and purpose, when you're living the predominant creative force, when you're living a life you love, that is when you can use your superconscious insight to make true choices you love. So how many of you are still working on living those core four choices? Type in a me if you're there. Who's just, who's here? You know, you're still, you're still doing it. Okay. So the first one is healthy and vital body or healthy and supportive body. Be living my true nature and purpose. Being the predominant creative force in my life and the life I love. Most of us are going to spend most of the year in magnetic mind working here. Okay, because once you actually live those four, then you can use your superconscious insight to make true choices you love. You re recode the resistance, follow through, turn thoughts into things. And this is when you become superconscious, live your truth, have it all now, and create more of what you love. You see? Can you see that? So, all the work is done here in this shift, that's where all the work is done. And so when, when, we're, when we're working in this, uh, in this field, when we're, we're doing this work, my goal for you is to become that creative spirit, you see? Because I know that if you become that creative spirit, then you're simply going to go out there and be able to create and do it. And that's what we're here to do. It is a good drawing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is a good drawing. It is a good drawing. Brand new drawing. Brand new drawing. Everyone's saying, give me the chart. Brand new, brand new. Don't know if it's if it's ready to be released yet. Of course I'm gonna give it to you guys. <laughs> the uh, the that's actually from my book. It's actually from my book. It's been very clarifying writing this book. Really, really clarifying. So writing the book and having to go over it and, and, and figuring out how to explain things even better has been a uh, beautiful, been beautiful. So, so sometimes as you're, as you're wanting to shift into, uh, you know, creating and stepping into your new reality, is it, is it true that, that on, on some plane, you might feel like you're not allowed, you know, uh, I'm not, a am not allowed to, to have what it is that I want. I'm not allowed it. You know, maybe you choose that you'd love to feel freedom, but on some level you feel guilty about having it. Or maybe you'd like to have, uh, 
you know, an experience of more love, but you kind of feel guilty to have it. Does anyone experience uh, guilt about if I had lots of money, I'd feel guilt or if I, you know, if I had, if I did have a big following, I'd feel weird, you know, like, does anyone experience that? So today I want to talk a little bit about uh, family entanglements. There's a, there's a really interesting saying from a mentor of mine, Bert Hallinger, and he said that in a family of, of thieves, in a family of thieves, the one that doesn't steal feels guilty. Mm. In a family of thieves, the one that doesn't steal feels guilty. And so what's interesting is in, in, family, in family work, uh, we feel when we're in alignment with what's true for the family experience, we feel innocent, we feel right. And when we do the opposite, we always feel a little bit guilty. We always feel a little bit guilty. So there's a bunch of work that Bert Hellinger did around families and he studied and he found that there's seven generations of trauma coded into our DNA. Now this is fascinating. Is this fascinating to any of you? Because this is huge to me. Seven generations of trauma. Now I believe it goes much further back than that, but he was scientifically able to prove seven generations, which I think is just incredible. That means that someone seven generations ago, right? So let's say a generation is 20 years, 140 years ago, they could experience something back then that was super traumatic and it can still be living in your field right now. And you might think, well, how does this happen? Well, we all know that you know we, we, we share genetic expression, we share uh, the same health conditions with this family, family lines that have passed us down. Well, also the family's gonna pass down warnings and learnings and understandings. And so it's, uh, it's, it's a big thing. And so what happens is there's a few rules, okay? And these rules that get passed down through the family help us to, to know how it is that we should be uh, to be able to, to experience life in the best way. And one of the things that, that we want to do uh, as a child is we want to belong to our family. Above all else, belonging to our family is very important, isn't it? isn't it? Belonging. Because if we don't belong to the family, well, it's very risky for our survival. So, so we basically choose and we decide to belong to our family. Seems right, doesn't it? Seems right. Well, I'm going to belong. And so what happens is there's certain uh, unconscious rules that are passed down through a family that whether or not you do uh, what the family does or you go against what the family does, you'll share the same experience as them. Same experience. So, so sometimes people go, well, Chris, no, I do the exact opposite of my family. But your experience is going to be in one of these three rules according, according to Hallinger. Okay, so the first one, okay, and the rules get passed down from parents to children. And I want you guys to hear this because it's going to be important for the work we're going to do today. The first rule is no one in this family, this is said from one parent, no one in this family will have a better experience of themselves than I'll have of me, okay? So if I can't experience myself as worthy, you're not allowed to, okay? If I can't experience myself as, as happy, you're not allowed to, okay? The, ne the, next, uh, the next rule is no one can have an, uh, an experience of me more than I can have of me. And no one can have experience of life. Okay, so of yourself, of life, and of the parent than they're having. Basically, your experience, the way that you are experiencing this human journey, is not allowed to be greater than your family. And so this is interesting, because a lot of people say to me, but Chris, I'm not anything like my family. They, they all work and they're all this and I'm over here. And we unpack it. And this person over here is a conspiracy theorist, theorist that has a business that never quite has enough, is always fighting the man. The, and then the family is over here and they have a job and they, you know, they go to church and they're doing everything normal, but they always feel like they can never have enough because the, the boss or is not letting them have it. And then they realize I make different decisions, but my experience is the same. They go, oh, wow, my experience is the same. Does this make sense? So it's not about decisions. So for me, for example, I went out there and built businesses and created you know, financial abundance. 
But for a long time, my experience of life is I still had to be a hard worker, right? Still had to be a hard worker. I still had to be stressed. I still had to be doing those sort of things. Is that interesting to you? And so it's the experience. What are you not allowed to experience? See, it's not about what it is that you're doing. It's about the experience. So and we're here to try to experience something. But what if for some reason you're not able to experience things because in your family there was an unwritten rule that you're not allowed to feel good. You're not allowed to feel proud. You're not allowed to feel love. If you're not a feel, a, allowed to feel love and you spend all this time trying to go out there and get love and do this, but then you realize you can't feel it. What if there was an unwritten rule that's sitting in your family field? Now, this is really interesting stuff. Anyone else find this interesting? Anyone else finding this interesting? Give me a yes in the chat box if this is interesting, if this is relevant to you and, and you're happy to be here. Because what if you're doing everything right, but on an unconscious level, you just can't have that which you wish to have because of an unwritten, unconscious decision made to you to stay connected to your family experience? What if, that was, what if that was sitting in your field and you had no idea until right now that you keep on searching to go and create more and do things, but you keep having the same experience of not being worthy and it's got nothing to do with you. It was simply inherited. And what if it wasn't your parents either? What if they inherited it from their parents? And what if they inherited it from their parents? And what if six generations ago on your father's side, uh, there was a there was a huge amount of abuse uh, or rape or something terrible, and you're just still replaying the same unconscious pattern in that field from six generations ago. It has nothing to do with you or anyone you've ever met. What if the the reason why you can't have have what it is you think you can have is sitting in a structure? that is well beyond uh, the generations that you know exist. And so let's open up to that and let's do, let's do something imaginary. Let's do something fun. Let's see what's true there. We're going we're gonna to set up an imaginary dinner table and we're going to pretend that we're sitting at a, a table with our family members and we're going to experience and understand what's going on and what's there. And we're going to use our parents as metaphors whether you know your parents or, or have never met your parents or you're adopted, we're going to create metaphors and structures to make it up and understand what is there. So let's get ourselves into a structure. Who's excited about today, by the way? Let's get ourselves moving in a really beautiful structure. So everyone knows step one. We need to choose a choice. What choice are you working on? I hope you've got your choices like I do next to you. Have your choices written out. If you you should be able to pick a choice. So if you don't have a choice you're working on or you haven't got your choices, make sure you do the intro uh, session inside of the masterclass. But if you're brand new, I want you to choose uh, a life I love, the end result of a life I love, okay? If you don't have a choice to work on, we're gonna go for the biggest, broadest choice. But if you have a choice, then you, you're, gonna have, you're gonna have one. So type in a number one, the number one when you have uh, chosen your choice. That you're going to work on today cool 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 so what i want you to do is close your eyes and step into having that choice so close your eyes step into it and experience it to be true what would it be like if that was true to step into it and choose it in your mind and to yourself i choose the end result of a life i love or i choose an end result of whatever it is mm. just make that choice in fact i'm going to do it with you I choose the end result of leading a movement of liberated, high vibe humans living and creating from their hearts. That's my choice. Mm. Step into yours and choose it. Experience what it's like to have it. Mm, feels so good. Witness it to be true. Notice how you are. What are all the things you do now that you're that? Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, so open your eyes, come back.
So what is it like now? What is it like now compared to that? And so just acknowledge what have you created now compared to that? And so is it, you know, what have you got? Is it a smaller version of it? Is it flowing? And um, yeah, miserable. Well, that's a subjective um, view on it. So, but just notice that it's not what I want. Fair enough. A tiny version flowing, smaller version, smaller version, middle of creation flowing, a little stuff. Beautiful. So just notice what is it like now? What is it like now? Cool. And so I like to just close my eyes and just acknowledge what do I have now compared to that? So for me, you know, I've got this, this growing tribe of it's, it's freaking amazing and it's growing and it's nowhere where I want it to be yet, but it's, it's still beautiful and small and I know everyone's names and it's, ah. Oh. And so just notice the now compared to where it is. Yeah. A sapling in the forest, I like that. Cool. Tiny sprout. Beautiful. Okay. So now let's let's unpack. Okay. And let's consider, well, what's in the way? If anything, you know, what's what's in the way between where you are and where you want to be, right? So so just ask yourself, what what beliefs are in the way? What beliefs are in the way? What's what do you believe about yourself? that's in the way between where you are now and where you want to be. What beliefs are there? So just experience the beliefs. Great. Okay. So what emotions are in the way? What emotions are in the way of where you are and where you want to be? So what, what emotions are there? What beliefs, what thoughts, what emotions? Yeah. It needs to be faster. It's not good enough. Yeah. All right, cool. So we're going to do a little bit of a process. Okay. It's a closed eye process and it's imaginary, okay? So we're gonna imagine a family dinner table, okay? And you're gonna imagine um, parents being there. You might see your actual parents, you might not. You might not even have a visual, or you might never have met your actual parents, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna go with what comes. Your super conscious is going to give you the metaphors and instructions and myths that are important, okay? And so that's really important. So what I would love you to do is just give me permission to connect to your superconscious, okay? And we're going to step into the field and we're going to explore what might be in the way of this end result from a family perspective, okay? Okay, so you don't have to do anything. I'm going to guide you through it. I'm going to guide you through it. What we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with some specific contracts that you may have designed to create a workable solution to try to solve the family dynamic. So if the family is sad, you might have created a contract that you're going to try to make them happy. If the family is angry, you might have created a contract to, to try to be angry with them. See, sometimes as children, in order to belong to the family, we want to try to help. Does that make sense? Like, imagine you, you see, uh, you know, your parents carrying in some firewood and you see them struggling you might think to yourself, I should go help them, All right? I'm going to go carry some of that and, and it would ease the load or, you know, you see them hanging out the washing or cooking the food or carrying water. You think to yourself, I'm going to go help them. And that makes sense. And so sometimes we see 
uh, a parent and as a child, we see them being really sad and we go, do you know what? I'm going to be sad too. I'm going to be sad too. And I'm going to try to be sad to try to take some of that from them. Well, it actually goes deeper than that. We either do one of two things. We either are going to prove to them what they could have done or we're going to try to take it on and then resolve it for it for them. Either way, what we do is we create a contract that isn't about us creating what we love. It's about solving things for them. And it's really, it's really interesting, but a lot of, a lot of children, they come into this um, plane and they, they, they form a limited perspective. And then they look back at their parents and see pain. And they say, hey, because of that pain, because of that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to solve everything for you. But I just want you to imagine for a second, imagine that uh, you're a parent. Some of you, this is easy, or even a grandparent. And I want you to imagine a little toddler with nappies on that just spew, you know, vomit down there, down them, down themselves, running around with a diaper. And I want you to imagine this little baby looking at you and saying, I'm going to solve all your problems for you. I'm going to, I'm going to solve your problems. I'm going to heal you and I'm going to take all your pain on because because you, you can't handle it. And I just want you to imagine what you feel like as the parent witnessing this kid trying to do that to you. And then, and then as you do it, then, then, see the, and then see the kid say, hey, because you can't be happy, I'm going to go be happy. But, you, you know, and just to prove you, prove to you. Can you see how ridiculous it is? It's like the kid is somehow attaching their reality to you. Isn't that weird? Like when you think about it as a parent, you're like, what are you doing? Like, like, let me ask you, how do you relate when the kid says, well, I'm going to make my whole life about proving to you that you can be happy. Parents like, I'm fine. Isn't it? The parents like, well, I don't need you to do that. I'm, I am happy. This is the way I want to be. Just go do your own life. True. Go be you. So what we want to do is we, we want to be able to acknowledge and recognize this in ourselves. It's a really interesting part of, of, of be, becoming an individual is for some reason, we want to be both an individual and part of our family. And, and we do this, we come in and we see the people that are God to us. They literally created us and we see pain and we want to try to solve it. So we create some contracts, okay? And the contracts start off like this, because of you, I'm going to, okay? Now, the healthier the family is, the weaker these contracts are. So for some of you, this is massive. And for some of you, this is very small, okay? This is very small. But either way, we're going to explore it and have some fun. So are you guys all up for this? Give me a yes if you're up for it. We're going to go through the closed eye exercise now. This won't be a recode yet. This is a bit of an uncovering, and then we'll jump into the recode. So let's have some fun with this. So close your eyes and just give me permission. Close your eyes and just give me permission. And, and in your mind, I just want you to, to grow yourself younger. Like just in your mind, just take a few breaths and grow yourself younger. That's it. Just grow yourself younger. And, and just grow yourself younger and make up an imaginary moment. Make up an imaginary moment that happens somewhere between the ages of, I don't know, four and seven, something like that. And I want this imaginary moment to be a family dinner table filled with your family. Maybe the dinner table is inside. Maybe it's a picnic table. Maybe everyone's sitting down on the ground. I don't know. Just whatever's perfect for you. I want you to imagine a family dinner table. And I want you to imagine that it's yours. Whether you can see faces or not, I just want you to imagine it and make it up. So I want you to watch and observe this the best you can. Imagine it and just make it up. You can do it. From a surveillance camera view, 
where you can see everything and anything. The first question, what is in the mother's front compartment, the part of their awareness that you're allowed to know? What is it that you're allowed to know about your mother? What are you allowed to know about her emotionally? What are you allowed to know about her thoughts? What are you allowed to know about what she thinks of herself, what she thinks of the world? And what age is she at that time? What are you allowed to know about the mother? What does she let you know is true for her? Her beliefs, her feelings, her thoughts about you, about your siblings, about the world, about life. Great. Just take note of that. What is in your mom's back compartment that we're not allowed to know? The back part of her. What are you not allowed to know about mom, but you do? What are you not allowed to know about your mother, but you do? Just acknowledge it, witness it. What are you not allowed to know, but you do? Mm. Just keep your eyes closed and go with it. Imagine it, make it up. Notice what comes through. Great. So now let's turn to the father, your dad. What are you allowed to know about your dad? What's in his front compartment? What thoughts are you allowed to know? What does he believe about the world? What are you allowed to know? What are you allowed to know about your father? Mm, just really associate, ask yourself, what am I allowed to know about him? And what, what age is he? What age is he? Hmm. What am I allowed to know? Nice. That's it. What age is he? What am I allowed to know? And what is in my father's um, back compartment. So what am I not allowed to know about my dad, but I do. And just with your eyes closed, just experience what you're not supposed to know, but you do. And just, just acknowledge it, witness it. And now regress both your parents down to their emotional age. Have some fun. Have your parents grow younger to their emotional age wearing adult clothing. Just have some fun in your mind, whether you see pictures or not, just set the intention to do that. So as you do that, I've got a big question to ask you. What are the three big family rules for this family? If there were three rules, what are they? What is allowed? What is supposed to do? If you were to teach someone else how to belong to this family, what would be the three rules you would give them? Mm. Mm, that's some good awareness. Mm. So float down into your imaginary body in this imaginary setting and just set the intention that you're there. I'd like you to imagine you make an I-beam connection to the mother. Okay. As a child making an I-beam connection to your mother, what is it that you're uploading to the mother, to your mother what is it that you're, what is it that you want for her? What are you trying to tell her? What do you want to give her? How is it received? What is she getting from you? Notice what is it that you're uploading to the mother?
That's right. And now make an I beam connection to the father. What is uploading to the father, to your father, to the dad? And how is it received? What is he getting from you? And just take time on that. What do you want for him? What are you giving? What is it that you would like to see happen for him? Hmm. Now, when you're ready, I'd like you to open your eyes. And with all that uh, experience, I've got two questions for you. What is it that you want most for your mother? What is the contract with her? And what do you want most for your father? What is your contract with him? So what I want for dad is this. And so my contract is this. What, you know, what is it? So the contract might be, because you were so unhappy, I'm going to be happy. Because you were unable to tell us that you loved us, I'm going to tell everyone I love them. Because you were a victim, I will also be a victim. Because well, what is it? So either you, you're saying I'm going to be like you or I'm going to be different because of you. So I'd love you to acknowledge it. And maybe when you're ready, type some in. What is it that you want most for your mother? And what is your contract? And what is it that you want most for your father? What is your contract? It's very important. We're going somewhere with this. So open your eyes and, uh, and give it a go. And give it a go. I tell my mother to live for herself. So you want her to live for herself. And so then what is, what is it that you do, Peter? How does, how does that define you? Here they come. Father, because I never thought you loved me, I'll tell everyone around me I love them. Mom, to see the world without being scared and not admitting to it, Mom, I'll take care of you. I'll obey. Dad, I'll obey. Okay? Because I never thought you loved me uh, completely. It completely defines you, Peter. Thank you. Good acknowledgement. Mom, because you want attention, I'm avoiding being the center of attention. Beautiful. Thanks, Roxanne. Telling my father I will help ease his pain. Okay, so that's what you want for him. And then what is your contract? How does that then create a contract of how you'll do life? Father, freedom, you're allowed to want more. And I've always rebelled. So I will show you. So I will show you what you should have done. Yeah. I'm going to be like my mom and be loving strong. Yes, I will be like you. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. So there's some there's some families here that are that are that are strong. There's not huge challenges, and so it's good. Just honor what's true. Yeah. I will honor my authentic self because you couldn't. Nice cat, father. I will be successful because you struggled to live your purpose. Perfect. Nice. Look at all these coming in. Cool. I can't read them all out. There's way too many in here now, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. So I'll just let everyone just explore this for a second. I'll just let um, explore this. Yeah. Right on, Amber. I'll be strong because you are not. I'll be independent, successful on my own. Yeah. Cool. So uh, is this a good exercise? Who's, who's, uh, who's getting something from this? Okay. So here's the key with this. Is anything you're doing because of, uh, because of, um, a contract with a family member, is it a true choice? It's not a true choice. You're only doing it to prove that they are wrong 
or to help them. It's not a true choice, is it? Does this make sense? It's not true. Can you even feel the energy in when you write it like that? Because of this, I'm going to do this. Because you were this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this to try to help you here. Do you feel it? There's nothing in it. It's childish. You see? And, and, and did anyone create it or, or just you, you know? Interesting, hey? So, so is it interesting? Yeah, it's childish. And it, it's... it's um, completely unworkable you know you're never gonna solve it for him see how many of you were able to go and do something and then because you did it it actually changed your, your parents massively yeah most people were typing in not you know they really just they changed themselves if anything, they change themselves. Hey, is it true? If anything, they change themselves, not, not you. Yeah. A lot of saying, nah, it didn't anything, maybe a bit. But, the, but, but when it really comes down to it, you can do whatever it is that you want to do and they can change or not change. Because who really creates the change? Yeah. It's really, it's really the adult. The adult create when they want to change, they change. And then and they're there to, you know, to, to live their own life and do their own life. And so are you. But if you simply live your whole life with this contract, uh, you're not in true choice. And if you're not in true choice, you're violating step number one, which is have a true choice. Yeah, Wendell says, what about examples of being an, an inspiration? Yeah, what about it? It, so it sounds good, doesn't it? But you can still be an example or an inspiration without the intention of I'm doing this to be an example or an inspiration. Does that make sense? It's a very, it's a very, um, it's a very big difference between I am choosing to be an inspiration to my mother, versus I'm just choosing to go out there and live my life to the fullest. And as I'm living my life to the fullest, maybe that becomes an inspiration to them. You, you, do you see the orientation? Here's the orientation that that was sitting there as a baby in diapers, going, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix you," you, you know. Um, you, you can't be inspired without me doing something. So here's a question I have to all of you. What's the silent instruction that you're giving every time you're the one that has to do something to then uh, change them, that they can't do it? What about the instruction, I'm only doing this because of you? What's the real instruction? My life is anchored to them. Either way, isn't it true? You're anchoring your life to, to them. And so... Your, your life is yours. And for, for many of us, as we are, as we are moving towards what we want, we, we, have, um, we have unwritten rules that are stopping us, that are in the way, that are there. And sometimes this can be um, some family stuff, okay?